Hello guys, welcome back. Um, we're working, working, working on the vehicle. As you guys could see here, the chassis and the suspension is complete. You know, they tell you on the on the on the instructions to not to glue any of the wheels, okay? Um, unless you're planning on playing with your model and or you know having the tracks move I, I would recommend you just uh, just glue everything in place make sure it's aligned as you guys can see uh, that's why I have this piece of, t of paper um, when I was judging the the show that I just had uh, my club uh, one of the things that uh, the main judge the head judge of, of my group uh, what's pointing out is the suspension and all the wheels have to be perfectly aligned um, most of the models that uh, didn't place was because one of the the wheels you know was crooked and it wasn't aligned perfectly uh, that's very very important in any type of armor they have to be aligned so that's why I use this piece of paper just to help me align everything and uh, the only thing I did not glue uh, was the front suspension I like the fact that you could move the front wheels just to uh, give it a better pose you may say um, the the front wheels are, <laughs> are pretty decent man it's just you know with uh, a little bit of weathering they're gonna they're gonna look very, very good. Uh, fortunately for me, John at Scalm Automatic has a, a whole video on how to weather wheels like this. Okay. okay guys, so moving along, we're working on the cabin, the main frame of the cabin. It's already put together. Um, you know, injection marks galore underneath, as you guys could see it. I, I just put the putty there so you guys get an idea of how much um, you know holes there is I just went ahead and, and sanded the ones on the uh, the wheel wells smooth because those are the ones that you're going to be able to see this is going to be mostly cover it's up to you if you want to go ahead and sand them um, the radiator okay you got two options uh, you got close and you got open here's the open one but if you guys notice and <clears throat> it has this hole underneath which I looked in in the instructions and there is no indication of this hole on the on the on the instructions there's no purpose for it um, to be honest, I really don't know why they put this hole in there. Uh, so I'm gonna cover it. And the way I did it was I just took a piece of rod, you guys could see it there, of uh, styrene actually sprue. And I apply some glue there, okay? Uh, what you do is you apply some glue and then you move it around. Let, let the styrene melt so it seals the entire hole and when it's completely cured you just snap it sand it smooth if i do need that hole if it's something that it's accurate on the real thing i could just go ahead and and get um, my dremel and and drill the hole again so it's not going to be that easy to re uh, redo again so just wanted to show you guys this real quick and how i handle that okay so see you in the next bit all right, so moving along, let me show you guys <laughs> the bad parts of the, of the kit, okay? Um, this is, again, this is a 70s kit. It, it's not gonna be the greatest kit. Sorry, I'm trying to find the best uh, angle here. So, notoriously, Tamiya and any kid from that time, um, they use vinyl tracks, okay? Um, which I don't mind, I don't mind the vinyl tracks. What I do mind is that they give you exactly the length that you need, okay? Which creates, creates a lot of tension. 
on the suspension and and you know it, it's awful okay I don't I don't know how else to put it um, if you guys know of any technique where I could stretch him out I, uh, somebody suggested uh, hot water <clears throat> but I want to just have a little bit more length so I could put him on and uh, that way I could weather him separately if not I'm gonna have to just put him on and and deal with it but that's just one of the the flaws or this kit is just the uh, the vinyl tracks they're just awful they're the length is just there so what it does is when when we have the suspension you know we have it perfectly aligned and everything and and you know everything's looking good when we put the tracks the tension is so much it starts to with time it starts to bend your wheels um, to where you almost have to pin them if you don't want to bend them um, you know it happened with my t34 um, you know it's just after time the suspension just started just started giving in into the you know the tension of the of the tracks so I was very disappointed I did not find aftermarket tracks uh, there is an aftermarket suspension for this kit but it doesn't include tracks and it just sucks you know because you know if you have a kit and one of the weak points is a certain part then the aftermarket guys should jump on that but unfortunately I, I just couldn't find it but you know I'm just gonna work with it suspensions all done okay I think I show you guys this on the last video I have to review my own videos because I don't know when where I left it this is the, the passenger area or the rear part of the vehicle as you guys could see it comes with all the seats and and all this stuff and uh, you know to me a fit on the bottom again a lot of injection marks and uh, I just smooth the ones that I know that are gonna be visible I just move them out um, but you know this thing is gonna be weathered with mud and stuff so I'm not too worried about it um, I still have to see if I have to remove the ladders on the side due to the uh, the storage set that I'm using um, so I gotta look into that the cabin or the passenger side it's all completed as you guys could see a lot of putty just to smooth things out on the bottom I went ahead and put putty on the on the uh, wheel wheels <clears throat> this is the part that we sanded smooth okay the grill so it's all smooth now using the the, the styrene rod but I show you guys um, that worked out really well I put a little bit of texture with the putty on the wheel wheels uh, just to represent a little bit of mud okay so that's done I used a little bit of putty on the dashboard just to make it look a little bit more flushed um, the one of the doors you gotta cut it open if you want to display the figures okay the figures that's another flaw of this kit okay and I think <laughs> every kid and Tamiya um, you know I, I don't know Tamiya newer figures are probably way better but Back in these days, they were just covered in mold lines and, and uh, yeah, it's, they were just awful. Just to give you an idea of how they look, just awful, okay? Um, you can still paint them, you can still make them look decent. And also, I've, I figured, <laughs> I figured that I'm gonna be using about two to three figures on this vehicle. Uh, maybe two who knows maybe a, uh, the driver and a passenger sitting on the back I'm not sure but I'm, I'm very excited about just painting figures in general uh, I know Sergio Soto from Colombia uh, he has a, a tutorial slash showcase of how he painted 
his 135th scale uh, figures, so that's a little bit helpful. Um, but I've been watching a guy by the name of Ben Cummins. Uh, he's a master figure painter, and I've learned a lot from him. So that's where we are, guys. Um, slowly but surely, you know, working on different things. Uh, here are the wheels, and yeah, we're just moving along. Uh, be patient with me by the next video. I hope to have everything already uh, together and ready for priming Okay, so as always I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye